My name is Jamie Monastersky. I am the press secretary for the National Chief's Office and uh, communications lead on the uh, Vatican visit to, uh, to visit the Pope this December. Um, today's a special day. Um, the AFN is releasing the names and titles of the 13 First Nation delegates who are going to travel to Vatican City this upcoming December to meet with His Holiness. The delegates represent First Nation regions from coast to coast to coast, uh, Northwest Territories, Northwest NWT Regional Chief Norman Yakalaya, portfolio holder of Knowledge Keepers, Residential Schools, and First Nation Veterans, is the delegation lead. And he will be uh, taking the lead on this press conference. And I will hand it over to him right now. Regional Chief Yakalaya. <clears throat> Ask to unmute. Regional Chief, you're muted. There we go. Okay, thank you, Jamie. And it's a good dry run. I'll try again. Masicho, Jamie, and the media outlets for this important historical press conference this afternoon. Greetings to my regional colleagues, Cindy Woodhouse from the AFN and the delegation from the Assembly First Nation and the support and staff from the Assembly First Nation. Uh, traditional greetings from my home territory in the Northwest Territories. We say Nakale means good morning, Tutsane Konaso. Today is a good day. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm coming to you from my home territory, the Northwest Territories. It's a beautiful day from the Creator that we are blessed and thankful for this breath of life. Our language is so beautiful, and it's our way to greet people. I acknowledge all of you in your home territories. We're beginning a historical trip today. I was asked by the Assembly of First Nation National Chief Roseanne Archibald to lead the AFN delegation to Rome to meet the Holy Father, Pope Francis. I am the portfolio holder for the residential school and also a survivor, and I'm honored and privileged to do so. This trip has been a long time coming. Our people have asked for a trip like this for many years, and there have been other trips, but this time the Holy See is holding an audience with each of the indigenous nations from across Canada and meeting and hearing stories from the survivors themselves. Our hope is that this visit and a potential visit from the Pope on our home territories will provide some measure of dignity and respect to the survivors and the intergenerational survivors of the residential schools. The reactions of the First Nation and Canadians to the recent recovery of our children, our loved ones, and the hundreds of unmarked graves on residential school sites were managed by the Catholic authorities have been very emotional and supportive. The public view in Canada reaffirmed that a papal apology is absolutely required to advance the healing and reconciliation. We seek to hear the words on our lands by the Pope. We seek justice. It is only that we can begin walking truly on the healing path of reconciliation. I am joined by residential school survivors and their families in demanding justice for the innocent children whose lives were stolen. I've also asked every Canadian to stand with the First Nations as we continue this painful but important work. 
I ask that you listen, learn, and reflect on the history we share as a country. And now, it's my pleasure to introduce the Manitoba Regional Chief, Cindy Woodhouse. Regional Chief Cindy, thank you. Thank you to my colleague, uh, Regional Chief Jack Elia. I know that this is a tremendous, op a tremendous time in our history. And uh, I just want to introduce myself. My name is Cindy Woodhouse Nipanak, and I'm from uh, the Penemutang First Nation in Treaty 2 territory. And I'm coming to you live from um, Treaty 1 territory in Winnipeg, Manitoba. And, you know, Manitoba has been, you know, impacted greatly um, on residential schools as, as well as the entire country. And I just, you know, uh, fought as a young person um, growing up in this, in this place in Treaty territory and um, I just want to, uh, you know, I followed, you know, Phil Fontaine. He's been a mentor to so many people on this, on this hard issue, on this hard, dark issue. And I know that he would never, he would never say this, but this comes from my heart because I hear it from some of our leaders when, when they started to talk about this, this dark issue um, way back when, way before my time, way before many of us probably where we are, where we are now. And I know that when he would speak to it and, and Phil, I've never, Phil and I have never talked about this too much, but I, I've spoken with other um, chiefs and leaders and P and residential school survivors that didn't want to talk about this issue um, way back when, and, and it was a hard thing to to have to push push that message out there. But people like like Phil and you know many of our former national chiefs and uh, you know Dr. Wilton Littlechild and many people bringing this issue to light and to to know that it that it that it did happen to our people and I just so I want to thank you know Phil for for taking on this this heavy task of um, traveling to the Vatican and and as well as my colleague um, Regional Chief Norm Yakalaya I know for the past many years Regional Chief has been uh, Regional Chief Yakalaya has been pushing this issue to ask the Pope to to come you know to, to come to Canada and to to, to give an audience to our First Nations people. And so I want to thank him in all his work over the past um, few years, as well as our former National Chief, Perry Belgard. I want to thank him as well, and, and National Chiefs before that, that have put this hard work in, as well as our current National Chief, um, for supporting this trip and um, trying to work with everybody to make sure that this trip is a successful one. So, so to the press and to, first of all, to our survivors, I just want to say that, you know, I love you. And I, and I know that this is a hard, a hard time uh, that, that we, and, and some of these hard discussions that still have to happen. And like my colleague had said, we call on all, all Canadians and, and people all over the world to, to, to follow us, you know, follow our journey and to the press. Each of you are so important to getting this message out, to getting our word out on, on what had happened and what, what, what our history you know, the history of, of Canada, it hasn't always been um, great, especially for Indigenous peoples. And so I just, I want to thank you for, for, for being here today. And I look forward to, to meeting each and all of you on this, on this journey that we're about to embark on. Chimmy Gwech, Gigiobin Minowa, thank you. Plus, each other, Regional Chief uh, Cindy Woodhouse. Now, I want to take the opportunity this moment to name the delegates who will be attending the visitation to the Holy Father and introduce you to some of them who are joining us today. From the Yukon, Adlin Weber, John Bikelli from the Northwest Territories, Miss Phyllis Gugu from Nova Scotia, Marlene Thompson, Thomas from PEI, Dr. Marie Ann Day Walker Pelche from Saskatchewan, Marlene Cloud from Ontario, Grand Chief of the Cree Nation, Mandy Gall Massey from Quebec. And joining us today. Dr. Wilton Littlechild from Alberta. He will be the delegation spokesman at the time when we have our one hour meeting with the Holy Father. Along with Dr. Wilton Littlechild, 
will also be Mr. Phil Fontaine, former National Chief of the First Nation. And he will also be the co-lead with the delegation as a spokesperson from Manitoba. Chief Roseanne Kashmir from BC will be joining us. Fred Kelly from Ontario is our spiritual support person and he will not be on this call today as he has other things to attend to. Our youth are very important and the youth rep from New Brunswick who is on the AFN Youth Council, Rosaline Labilwa. I apologize if I didn't say her name right, Rosalie. And the other youth would be Taylor Ben Tessel, the AFN youth rep from BC. We are ready to take your questions from the media. Back to you, Kelly. Thank you. Thank you so much, Regional Chief. Um, so as we posted in our chat here, we asked that if you would like to ask a question, please um, do so in the chat with your name and your media outlet. And please also let us know who you would like to direct that question to. Um, we saw that there was one question regarding full names and spellings of all of the delegates that will be provided shortly after this press conference. We'll circulate a press release and that will have the names and spellings and regions of, of all 13 First Nation delegates. So um, you can look forward to that afterwards. Uh, for now, please continue to uh, write in the chat. Um, I see uh, one from Kim Mackerel from the Wall Street Journal, for Cookby Casimir. Uh, go ahead, Kim, for uh, Cookby Chief Roseanne Casimir. Thanks very much. Um, yeah, so I'd like to address this uh, to Cookie Casimir, but if anyone else would uh, would like to weigh in, I'd, I'd welcome that as well. Um, it's a question specific to residential school records uh, and the Catholic Church. So I'm, I know, uh, Cookie Casimir, you've, you've spoken about that issue in the past. I'd just like to ask at this point, have you received or are you now in the process of receiving the residential records, uh, residential school records you're seeking from the Catholic Church specifically? Um, if not, what specific types of records are you still missing? And what's your current understanding of the delay? And I realize there are uh, simultaneous efforts to obtain records from other entities as well, and just hoping you can specifically address the, 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 um, the Catholic Church in this question. Yes, um, so Thank you very much for that question. Um, just in regard to the records, I know that we are still in a process and working with our um, team to obtain those records. So they're going through a process and um, you know, right at this moment in regard to the records, I'm uh, still awaiting for the latest update on that. Thank you. Would it, would it be possible for me to ask a very quick follow-up to that? Yes, Kim, go ahead. We'll do one question, one follow-up today. Thank you. Just hoping to, to ask if um, uh, Kasmir or anyone else, if you plan to use the opportunity of meeting with the Pope to, um, to press on the issue of records. I will be also, that is a good question. Um, you know, I am going to take the opportunity to also include, you know, the importance and significance of, you know, those records to be able to, you know, support the work that we're doing here at the Council of Schwabek and, you know, to be, able to utilize those records um, to assist the families as well as the communities and you know reiterating the importance and the significance of that cook show thank you could be casimir thank you kim uh, we have a question here uh, this is fraser needham at aptn national news ottawa uh, Fraser, you haven't um, directed your question to someone in particular in the chat, but uh, please go ahead. Oh, hi there. Sorry, yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure who this would be directed to, but uh, I was wondering to. Uh, for uh, I guess there's a technical advisor on the call. I, I, was, I heard as well, but I was wondering what the total cost of the trip is and who is paying for it. Uh, 
Hi, this is Sherry Antone here. Uh, I am the Chief of Staff for the uh, National Chief's Office as well as the technical lead uh, to support this delegation. Uh, what I can say is that the, um, the uh, Canadian Conference of Catholic Bishops uh, are the ones who officially invited the delegates uh, from the AFN and they are uh, paying for that trip. Do you know a cost estimate on it or how much it might cost? Unfortunately, I do not have a firm cost, uh, a total for that, um, but we do have uh, 13 delegates as well as uh, the, our, our spiritual advisor. Uh, so those, are the, those uh, are the individuals that they are covering. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Sherry. Um, I have a question here from Michael Swan. Um, Michael, if you could please state your outlet. Chief Littlechild isn't on this call, so perhaps you'd like to redirect that question elsewhere. Uh, sh sure thing. Uh, I'm from the Catholic Register newspaper. Uh, I had thought uh, Chief Littlechild would be on this. Um, I was basically going back to the TRC um, when it was in operation uh, Chief Littlechild was, it was my understanding, the person most uh, insistent upon uh, call to action 58. And so I was get, hoping to get a sense of um, uh, why it was so important to him then and um, how disappointed he might be in um, how long it's taken to get to this point. Now, of course, nobody else can speak for Chief Littlechild. <laughs> So if, if you'd like to, uh, <laughs> you can uh, either rephrase that to one of the other delegates, or if you'd like to retract the question and, and come back to us um, when you've thought about it. For well, I mean, I I certainly uh, could ask the question of um, almost any of the chiefs uh, here, uh, perhaps particularly uh, Kupi Rosan Kasmir uh, about. You know, the long wait, what has it meant that this request has gone unfulfilled for the last five, six years? Um, hi there. No, thank you very much for that question. You know, I guess, you know, I just wanted to share that, you know, I know that when we're looking at um, Truth and Reconciliation calls to action number 58, you know, I know for us, it would be extremely important, especially the significance would be something that would be extremely meaningful. And looking at that context, you know, I would say that, you know, for him to be, you know, willing to come to Canada is definitely a first step, you know, that is going to truly be historical. And, you know, for him to, you know, even come this year close to even British Columbia would be quite significant. You know, for us, you know, this year has been ground zero um, with the um, GPR work that was done with the preliminary findings of the unmarked graves. And I think that too would be extremely significant for him to visit this year part of Canada and to be able to have that opportunity to, you know, meet, you know, with the survivors and to um, listen to how it has impacted them in residential schools. And I think that, you know, Having that would be, you know, acknowledging the truth, hearing the truth, and, you know, having that um, meaningful steps moving forward. Thanks very much. Thank you, Kupi, uh, Kasmir, and Michael. Um, I have a question here from Willow Fiddler from the Globe and Mail, and then uh, Kelly Malone, I'll, I'll go to you after, after Willow Fiddler. So Willow Fiddler, I think, um, you'd like to direct your question to Regional Chief Yakalaya. Hi. Uh, just a question about the, so the one hour meeting that will take place, how is it going to be decided amongst the delegation? What's going to be discussed and shared in that one hour meeting? And uh, looking for confirmation, um, Mr. Will, a little child is going to be the only one speaking during that time, or, or will others have uh, an opportunity? Thank you uh, for the question. And um, 
what I've been told that the Holy Father has uh, invited the indigenous leaders to come to the Vatican and to have an audience with them. So the way we are looking at this is that he is requesting our nations, the Inuit, the Métis, and the Assembly of First Nations, as the Holy Father is the head of the state. So we see this from the position of a nation-to-nation -nation meeting, and that the Holy Father is inviting us. We accept it. And the one-hour meeting is very important as he is also granting one hour to the Métis nation and the Inuit nation. And that as the Assembly First Nation, we are doing our internal work as to what does the Holy Father want to hear? We've been told he wants to hear from the First Nation people, the survivors. He wants to listen to us. So we have been doing our own internal work. It's like when we walk on our land and we want to go somewhere. We have to come together as a family and talk about our trip. Who's going to do what and what's the messaging? We have outlined in our key messaging. And Certainly we have discussions and talking and who's going to do what. And one of the messaging I could say is to talk about the impact and the discovery on the unmarked graves. And, you know, we pray for the people in Chico's and Kashmir's area. Shocking shocking and that just the start of other residential school sites and the devastating impact as told by our elders that this is what happened but it happened to take a discovery from beautiful British Columbia Kamloops to waken our eyes and that is the truth the other messaging we want to talk to the Holy Father is on the 10 principles that Dr. Littlechild is very experiencing and to talk to the Holy Father on the 10 principles of indigenous people. The other theme that we want to talk to the Holy Father is his willingness to come to Canada. And Mr. Phil Fontaine, former national chief, has a lot of experience in that. And then, where in Canada? We know that Chief Roseanne Kashmir indicated that the invitation to Kamloops. We hear other signals where the Holy Father can visit in Canada. We're excited and his willingness to come. And we prepared for his arrival on indigenous land and welcome him. And we hope, and I say our prayers that he will apologize to the families, to the survivors, as he done in other countries, to the indigenous people. And the last part that we want to look at our messaging of healing. What does the word reconciliation really mean? And to look at our future relationships with the Roman Catholic Church, 
and how that is going to be worked on to support who we are as indigenous people in our own spirituality and looking at the Christianity. We have strong Catholic faith followers in our communities. And so those are the highlight of the themes that we are working on. And this is incredible that the Holy Father is giving the indigenous leaders an hour each, unheard of. But we honor and we, that shows that this respect for us. And he already wants to hear from the survivors and ourselves and going forward. More importantly, we have two youth because it's their future that today we are talking about that they're going to lead. And our turn now to guide them and help them because the intergenerational impacts of the residential schools are affected. Every indigenous people in Canada, 100%. And that's why we think that this is the way to go. We hope that, and we pray that this is the message that the Holy Father will hear. However, it's still in a work in progress, and we've got a few days yet to um, get on the plane and go see the man himself, the Holy Father. Thank you. Thank you so much, Regional Chief. Um, I'll just back up a little bit here. Kelly Malone, I know I mentioned you, but I'd like to back up uh, Yannick dumont baron from uh, Radio Canada um, has a question. Uh, Yannick, you didn't mention who you would like to direct that to, so perhaps you just ask and uh, the right person can, can respond. Oh, Yannick, we can't hear you. Can you try asking that again, Yannick? How, how is that working now? There we go. There yeah. we go. Thank you. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, I guess the question is directed to the person who knows uh, the answer. By this, I mean that I'm interested in knowing more about how the visit will happen, who will meet who, when. Um, th that, that sort of details, just so that we, we can get a better sense of when you take the plane and you, and you land in Rome, what happens next? I'm trying to put a picture of this in my mind. Thank you. Looking for a schedule of the trip, in other words. Um, Sherry, perhaps you'd like to speak to that. Uh, certainly, thank you for the question. So uh, certainly there have, uh, you know, the, the duration of the trip will be um, from the 14th to the 21st. The day that the First Nations will actually be meeting with the Pope is scheduled for the 20th of December. Uh, and it, it's going to that that time frame is going to be the one hour where uh, the delegates will have an opportunity to uh, relay the messages that they have based on the themes that uh, Regional Chief Yakalaya has indicated. Um, I, I think just to answer a little bit further, uh, you know, amongst the delegates, they are determining who will actually speak to those themes. And, and so we will be able to provide more information later on at a later date. Thank you. Thank you, Sherry. Uh, Winnipeg, Winnipeg Free Press. Um, I don't have your name, unfortunately. I believe it's John Lonhurst at Winnipeg Free Press. Um, please go ahead. Yes, thank you. Yes, John Lonhurst here, Winnipeg Free Press Religion Reporter. Just wondering if Phil Fontaine can speak to the um, question of um, what it means to him. I'm sorry, I missed a question. What was the question, sir? Oh my, it's in the chat. I can read it out if you like, John. The question, uh, Mr. Fontaine is, after so many years of working on this issue, what does being a part of the delegation mean to you? Well, first of all, I'm, I'm uh, deeply honored that I was uh, selected as the Manitoba delegate to the papal visit. This will be my second uh, audience uh, at the Vatican uh, in 2009. You will recall 
I had uh, part of a private audience with Benedict the Sixteen um, at that uh, visit. We were unsuccessful in in securing an apology. Uh, the words we heard from Benedict the Sixteenth were uh, expressions of deep regret for the abuse inflicted on uh, First Nations children that attended residential schools. At that point, uh, we were uh, not so disappointed that we didn't accept those words. Um, but today, the circumstances are so different from when we first uh, went to Rome in 2009. Uh, we didn't have the TRC and the calls to action. We didn't have the United Nations Declaration on in Indigenous Peoples. We didn't have the 10 principles of reconciliation. We didn't have unmarked graves. So the circumstances are so different uh, for this visit. And uh, we already know as we travel to Rome that the Holy Father has committed to visiting Canada uh, to speak directly to indigenous peoples here in our homeland. And it is our hope that uh, uh, the Holy Father will issue uh, an apology when he is in Canada. You will note that uh, this call has been made over some considerable period of time that nothing would be more important than to, than to have the, the Pope um, issue an apology from our homeland. It could be in Kamloops, it could be in Wanaskewin, it could be in Winnipeg, it could be anywhere on a First Nations uh, territory in, in Canada. And so we're, we're uh, off to Rome with great expectations. Um, we hope that uh, we will have an indication from the Holy Father that when he comes to Canada, uh, he will issue an apology to us here. Um, so we have, uh, as I said, we have great expectations regarding our visit to, uh, to the Vatican. Thank you so much, Mr. Fontaine. Uh, next question here from Anar Virji from Al Jazeera English. Uh, go ahead, Anar, for Regional Chief Yekalaya. Um, thanks. I think actually part of my question was answered, but I wanted to um, just clarify the dates of the visit. It's the 14th through the 20th. And then I wanted to find out if anyone from the delegation um, uh, would plan to do like a press conference or have any sort of media availability um, in Vatican City or in Rome after the meeting with the Pope? I can answer that one. We will have media opportunities. Uh, we'll be 14th and 15th is the time we'll be arriving and settling in. The 16th, we'll be having a meet and greet with media that are there. Um, after our meeting with the uh, Holy <laughs> Father, there will be a press conference and media availability. And throughout that time, um, I will be on the ground with other uh, media, rep with other uh, AFN representatives that can set up meetings with uh, and interviews with delegates. Okay, great. And sorry, I apologize because I think my connection was a little unstable, but just to clarify the dates of the visit, it's the 14th through the 20th? Yes, traveling on the 14th to the 20th. Okay, thank you. Uh, might I add, uh, Jamie, the official dates for the uh, meetings with the Holy Father are from the 17th to the 20th. And for the Assembly of First Nations, our time with the Holy Father is on the 20th. We have one hour that to uh, uh, present uh, our position to the Holy Father. 
And then there is a plenary session on the 20th that will include not just the uh, 28 official delegates, 13 from the Assembly of First Nations, eight from the Métis National Council, seven from the Inuit. There will be others that will be allowed to participate in a, in a plenary session with, uh, with the Holy Father. Though we will not be allowed to speak to, to the Pope, it will be the Pope that will speak to the, uh, to the plenary session. Thank you so much for that additional information. Kelly Malone from Canadian Press. Uh, this, I believe, relates to what you were um, prepared to ask. Uh, so would you like to go ahead? I think um, part of what I've asked has already been answered as well. But can you explain a little bit about um, what kind of participation participation the delegates will have during the, the trip and specifically the meeting with the Pope? And will each person then be able to, I guess, kind of converse with the Pope or um, is that still being decided? Um, Regional Chief Yakalaya, would you like to answer that question? We can repeat it if you, if you like. I'll be happy to. Thank you, Kelly. So the messaging to his Holy Father is still in working progress and that it is through the designing of our AFN delegation as to the themes that they, 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 they want to, to speak to the Holy Father and they're working amongst themselves. We have one hour, unbelievable. Who would ever thought that the Holy Father would give us one hour? So we're doing very specific planning at minute to minute. We're opening up with the spiritual protocol of the First Nation. And we're working with the Canadian Council of Catholic Bishops we are working amongst ourselves as to the protocol and the segments of who are going to speak to the Holy Father on our themes and our languages. And then the closing that is being worked on as we speak. And who amongst the speakers, they will decide amongst themselves with the Assembly First Nation. The co-leads in that one hour meeting are Dr. Littlechild and former National Chief Phil Fontaine. They're our guides. They guide it. They know this. Whoever thought in the wildest dream of a residential school survivor from Inuvik for seven, eight years, seven to eight years that I spent that, if I had an opportunity to talk to the chief of the Roman Catholic, the head boss, the head man, the Holy Father, what would I say? And you gotta be careful, prayers come pretty fast and pretty, pretty good. And so we've got to be very, very careful with our words and do it in the most respectful, indigenous way that our language is very soft and loving. And that's how we're challenged. Because with this whole issue, residential school brings up a lot of issues and emotions. And for us, we want to do our best on behalf of the people we represent in Canada and our people and the young ones to know that, yeah, we could, we could walk together, but we got to show them that this is who we are as indigenous people. So it's still in work in progress. Thank you, Kelly. Uh, Chief um, Yakalaya, I wonder if I could add uh, a couple of points to your response. Uh, one has to do with uh, the uh, the information that uh, 
that regional chief Yatalaya uh, just provided you, uh, noted three official uh, delegations uh, to meet with, uh, with the Holy Father, the Inuit, the Métis, and of course the Assembly of First Nations. We've had discussions with the other two uh, national organizations. We have committed to, uh, as best uh, we can, uh, coordinate our efforts. Uh, we want to avoid duplication. Uh, we want to maximize the, the time we have with, uh, with the Holy Father. And so you look at our numbers. We have 13 delegates. And at one point, there was a thought that each person would be allowed to speak. But we thought uh, that maybe a bit too unwieldy. And so, as Regional Chief Yakalai mentioned, we've narrowed down all of the issues that we wish to raise with the Holy Father to four themes. And maybe five, but four at least. And each of the scenes will have uh, three representatives. And for example, um, Dr. Littlechild, Adeline Weber, and I will be with on the theme of uh, the TRC and the calls to action and the 10 principles of uh, reconciliation. So that's what we will speak to. And there will be only one person that will address that, those two particular issues. And that will be the, the same with, for example, on Mark Graves. That will be Chief uh, Kazmir from, from uh, Kamloops and two other representatives. <clears throat> so we want to make the best use of uh, uh, our time. Uh, we want to address the most important issues that are before us. We want to speak to expectations and, and outcomes and uh, that might include, in addition to the presentation we make, uh, presenting a document that we would leave with the, with the Holy Father. And we are thinking that he might wish to address that document when he uh, comes to Canada. Uh, we don't know when he'll be here, but uh, there's, um, there's been some suggestion that uh, he might uh, be here on the second national day, reconciliation on September the 30th, 2022. But that's just speculation uh, on the part of some people. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Fontaine. Um, Frazier from APTN had another question. Would you like to direct this question at someone, Frazier? Uh, yeah, I guess it's for uh, Chief Yakalea or Phil Fontaine or, or both or whoever wants to take it or, or both of them is, um, I, I guess maybe I, I just was, um, just from Mr. Fontaine's remarks. Um, so can you kind of confirm, I, it sounds like you're confirming in this particular trip, the call to action number 58 won't be, there, there won't be an apology that will be at a later date. And um, if that's the case, have you really received any assurance from the Vatican that uh, an apology will be forthcoming at some date? That, that's the question. Uh, Mr. Fontaine, would you like to carry on? You were sure. just discussing that. Well, this, this is my own uh, take on this. I, I haven't discussed it with uh, uh, Regional Chief Yakalaya or with uh, Regional Chief Woodhouse or the other delegates, but uh, it, it would be... Uh, and I don't want to overstate my position here, but it would be a terrible waste of time if the Pope was to commit as he has to come to coming to Canada and not issue an apology when he's here. I, I think it makes good sense uh, to have him, to have the apology when he's here uh, during his uh, papal tour to Canada. And I hope that uh, we will we, we will hear uh, a definitive answer from the Holy Father when uh, we have our time with him on the 20th. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, 
we have one more question here. I know we're getting up to the end of the hour. Um, Michael Swan from the Catholic Register. Did you have a particular person you're directing your question to, Michael? Feel free to go ahead. Sure thing. I mean, uh, I think any of the chiefs could answer this question. Um, uh, perhaps uh, Chief Yakalaya. Um, you know, the Pope's apology is an event. It, will, it happens, but reconciliation has to be between the uh, um, non-Indigenous Catholics and the Indigenous communities of Canada. How do you ensure that that happens after the um, after after we've had these big events? Your visit to the Vatican, the, the Pope's visit to to Canada. Um, do you fear that the rest of the country is going to say, "Well, that's done now. We're finished," or do you think will we that something has to happen to keep reconciliation alive? Michael, do you, you mind if I speak uh, Not at to all. this uh, question? Uh, Chief Yakil, I uh, might also wish to speak. Uh, we recognize that the apology is, is one important uh, matter, but we are also very focused on uh, steps beyond the apology. And there's been discussion around reparations, access to records, uh, unmarked graves, uh, the relationship between the Catholic Church and our community, and how uh, that particular relationship will be addressed after our visit, and, uh, and of course, hopefully, an apology when the, the Holy Father comes to Canada. So there are a whole number of outstanding issues that we will have to speak about and hopefully address along the way. Uh, we're, not, we're not going to uh, uh, cover uh, everything when, when we're there on the 20th, but we want to address the, uh, the most important issues of a whole litany of issues. And uh, we want to be very focused. We, uh, we want to... Uh, underline the importance of particular issues, for example, the 10 principles of reconciliation, the TRC calls to action on Mark Graves and the other uh, issues that I've, I've noted. So uh, I think uh, uh, both of us uh, have our work cut out for us after the apology. I mean, after the visit, and as I said, hopefully the apology, but I, I, I note your point about uh, reconciliation being much broader than First Nations or Indigenous peoples in the Catholic Church. We're really talking about an issue that uh, 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 deals with all Canadians. And uh, of course, we will continue to reach, reach out to all Canadians to join us on this journey of reconciliation. Okay, thank you. Uh, we'll take one more question. If anyone has a question for one of our youth representatives, we have Rosalie Labillois and Taylor Van Sacosa. Uh, if any journalist would like to ask one of the youth a question. I'm done. Oh. Okay, I'm not seeing any hands raised. Okay, Kelly Malone, thank you. Kelly Malone, Canadian Press. I'll switch mine with Michael's here. Um, we'll do them together. So for the youth delegates, what does it mean as a youth to take part right. in the delegation? And um, why do you care? And if you would also like to answer Willows, what's the message that you wanna to take to the Pope? Hello, um, thank you for your questions. <laughs> I think hey, I'll, try, I'll try my best to uh, you know, summarize in the best way that I can. Uh, my name is Rosie Labilwa. I'm the AFN National uh, Youth Council co-chair and I was selected uh, by my regional chief um, and I was a part of this delegation. 
And uh, when I was first initially asked, um, it was it was huge, um, you know, that this wasn't uh, a decision that was made uh, lightly, because uh, understanding, you know, um, the magnitude of of the significance of of this trip and and what that means for our people, especially as young people, and as uh, Regional Chief Gakalea had mentioned before you know, was, um, you know, intergen- intergenerational su- survivors. And, and I happen to be one as well. Um, and I think that opportunity that I get um, was something that uh, my grandfather never had the chance to. You know, he never got the chance to speak his truth. You know, there was unmentionable things that he could never speak about. And, you know, now it's my opportunity to speak my truth. Um, and hopes that I could do my the best of my abilities to help represent that youth perspective from across the country on how uh, we're severely impacted, you know, by this harm and and being able to, um, you know, call out to those who were a big part of, uh, you know, inflicting that harm against our people, and and most importantly, what that future looks like, you know, after. Um, you know, our trip, what's it going to look like when we come home? You know, how do we share our experience and and being able to help empower our young people, you know, to be proud of who they are, you know, that there is nothing ever wrong with us, that we are beautiful people, you know, a spiritual people, and and we should be proud of where we come from. And I think that this opportunity, you know, gets to show Canada, you know, especially as emerging leaders that, you know, we have a voice, you know, we don't, we can't be undermined, you know, because of, of our age or, you know, some people may think it's a lack of experience, you know, but we have truths. Um, you know, we are experts in our own, as, as young people, in our own realities that nobody else could speak about. So I think that's some of the things that, um, you know, in our trip going there, there's a, there's a lot of significance. Um, so as a former national chief, Phil Fontaine had mentioned, that uh, there's going to be divided into some themes, and uh, we've been uh, appointed a theme that we'll be speaking about. And so we're kind of in the works right now in developing uh, a statement that's inclusive and reflective, you know, from across the country, you know, from coast to coast, um, you know. And and obviously we uh, we understand that we we can't speak for everyone, but we'll try our, our very best and. Uh, you know, and it's just, it's truly an honor and, and to be, I'm super humbled to be able to bear witness to what our survivors have to share and, and be in there to be a support to them. And also as regional, uh, as regional chief Yakalea mentioned, you know, this is an opportunity for us to grow as leaders, you know, that someday our future children could look back upon it and, and, you know, they get to hear what, what we had shared and, and they could possibly be a part of that change as well. And, I think there was an important quote that I do want to share uh, from Phil Fontaine. Um, And he had talked about, you know, it's going to be the legacy of those survivors that will transform Canada and and that we are the legacy right now and that that's what's going to be taking place. And, you know, so it's it's really um, exciting uh, to be a part of. And I'm very much looking forward to where this may, may bring us. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rosalie. Taylor, would you like to add anything at all before we wrap up? No. Okay. All right, Jamie, I'll pass it back to you. I think we're all done, unless there's anything else um, that uh, Regional Chief Yakalaya wants to uh, close up with. I will hand it over to you, sir. Thank you, uh, Jamie, and thank you for the good questions from the media and also for the delegation um, for being here today. This Vatican visit, some call it an encounter, some call it an audience with His Holiness, Pope Francis, is truly a significant piece of work of past leaders, past people who made this happen. And we got to really thank them. And to thank many people across Canada that have experienced 
the residential school, the federal day school, the other institutions. We're just focusing now on the Holy Father. And I've been thinking, I'm an amateur in the Bible. And from my teachings of the residential school, while I lived there, it talks about in Matthew 7, 7, ask and ye shall receive. Seek and you shall find and knock and it shall be open to you. And as former National Chief Phil Fontaine and other speakers, as young survivors, we've been asking for an apology. We've been asking to seek justice for our people. We've been asking to have the governments recognize us, us as the first people. We've been asking for reconciliation and we start with the doctrine of discovery. We got to go back to the source of how we've been treated in Canada by all the institutions. And so we have received an invitation from the Holy Father. We seek now for an answer. We don't know, only God knows what the Holy Father will say to us. But we seek it. And everybody will have their own seeking for the nation of indigenous people seeking the respect and the justice. And we are going over there to knock on the Vatican doors. And it shall be open. We will have that one hour with his Holy Father, along with our brothers and sisters from the Inuit and the Métis. We're one family under the residential school. We all survived it. And we do this with the utmost respect to the Holy Father on behalf of all the survivors and our people. And we do this to seek true reconciliation. We pray to God, we pray that the Holy Father will do the right thing. And so we have lots of work cut out. We are indigenous people, we're no strangers to work. We live off the land. We know how to work, we know how to come together. And I say this, in this COVID time, we were coming together. And I wanna thank you, Jamie and the staff and the media and my colleagues on the call this morning. One of many press conferences we're gonna organize and, and do and you guys did a fantastic job, thank you. Thank you everybody, Miigwech, Masi Cho. And that's a wrap.